Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 2nd and the 9th of March 2019. This is where I talk about celestial transits. I give a brief message that helps us get through this week and it applies to all zodiac signs. So we are heading into a week of a new moon and Pisces conjunct Neptune. Couldn't get more Piscean than that. Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. That was Georgia jumping off the chair. Goodbye, Georgia. Doesn't even meow saying she's going away. So rude. And talking about rudeness, this could be, I'm, I'm moving away a minute from this new moon. And I'll get back to it and I'll say, Georgia, you're not only rude because you didn't say goodbye, you're now also meowing when I speak. I mean, who educated that cat? Anyway, so rudeness could be something of a theme over this week because we're having this Mercury square and, and Jupiter and, and, and Mercury is going retrograde and it's, it's conjunct Chiron. So we should be careful not to hurt ourselves or other people because of what we say. Yes, George, I know. No, you didn't offend me. Oh, I'm glad you're glad. You're very sweet. Yeah, I'm doing this video, Georgia. Okay, thank you. So, um, we have to be careful with our words. We have to be careful with how we phrase things because considering ourselves, usually we could be less tactful and less diplomatic and, and, and not as discreet. So really watch that uh, during this week. However, we can work well with people moving ahead on strategic subjects in our lives, on work subjects, career subjects, especially towards next Saturday when the sun is sextiting Saturn. Let's go back a minute to this new moon in Pisces conjunct Neptune. Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, so that adds up, that doubles up the Piscean dose of this new moon. Like every new moon, this is a time of an imprint that follows you throughout the next lunar cycle of 28 and a half or 29 and a half days. So, and it works. It's, it, it's scary how it works. Check it out, you know. There were times that I was angry with something over the morning of the new moon and then about the third of the month, the first third of the month, the first third of the month was with a lot of agitation in it, you know. It works that that um, exact. So check it out and tell me what you found out. Um, regarding relationships during this week, it's a sensitive time, meaning that it could be a time of an upgrade, it could be a time of a change as well. And if you are in a relationship and you don't want tremors to rock your roof, you better be more tolerant towards yourself, towards your partner, and work on tolerance with him or her as well. Um, it needs to be uh, a two-lane uh, two street, in a sense. You know, you can't uh, dance for two people. And this is a classical time when Venus is in Aquarius and squaring the rule of Aquarius, Uranus. It's a classic time that people break up relationships, that people go on affairs, people feel intolerant about the relationships they have in their life and want to move ahead and sometimes don't want to wait for other people who don't keep pace in their lives. So it could be an amazing time to work on their relationship, to try new things, to think outside the box, to allow flexibility to bring the relationship, the current relationship, up to date. Because we change all the time, but our relationship stagnates and then one day we can wake up and say, this is not who I am anymore. We've drifted apart. And if we do not have these realignments that Uranus is speaking about, all transformative planets are speaking about realignment from Saturn onwards. So if we do not realign our relationship and bring, bring it up to date, renovate it, it gets old and it crumbles away. You know, so um, if you are not in a relationship right now, this could be an amazing time to meet new people. You know, 
if uh, you would be a client looking for love i would say this is the time to go on tinder tinder people can you hear me <laughs> uh, uh, this could be a spike in your activity because it's an amazing time to meet uh, new relationships and especially not long-term relationships things that are bam bam thank you man like uranus is it's a lightning bolt you know or or thank you sir it's an amazing thing but we've had the honeymoon and the marriage and 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 the divorce in sometimes one or two nights and sometimes over a couple of weeks or months georgia i, I don't care i don't care about your past relationships right now i don't think they do as well anyway so enhance your calm as they say mercury is heading into retrograde that's happening on the fifth the sixth it's already uh, uh, standing and and then it's going to retrograde and we can feel it slowing down throughout the week we could have more communication malfunctions if we send out messages we need to be exact and make sure they were understood correctly and the same thing goes if we receive information make sure you were absorbing that information correctly if we have to plan a trip or if we're drawing a contract or if we're making business or anything we need to do watch the fine print watch the details because our logic doesn't work the same way you know a lot of people enjoy mercury retrogrades I get great chances on Mercury retrogrades that I usually uh, uh, utilize. But uh, it's a time to understand that you can see things differently, you can think differently, but you need to be more careful with the finer details. Uh, it's going to be retrograding in the, side, in the sign of Pisces, and it's conjunct, it, it's starting its retrograde conjunct Chiron. And all of that is, as I said, squaring uh, Jupiter. So watch what you say. Watch how you say it. Your thoughts could be a little darker than usual. Uh, they could be a little more dramatic. You could meet your own old pain uh, in your mind, in your words, in your communications with your surroundings, with your siblings, with your friends and co-workers or... or, or uh, people studying with you or just your neighbors and people in your neighborhood your extended family and so on all connected to mercury and other than that uranus is going to go back into taurus uh, finally moving away from the sign of aries safely into taurus this time it was in taurus it regressed back into Aries and now it's back into Taurus again Uranus is the renovator Uranus is the revolutionary Uranus is the innovator Uranus is the guy in charge of the acceleration needed to take us uh, uh, rocketing towards the future and when it comes to the sign of Taurus speaking about Earth speaking about our meeting and when i speak about our meeting i mean our souls meeting with the physical plane with the senses with the oh georgie you're so sweet with everything that we can feel and touch and quantify and value with the land with money with food with our bodies with economies with uh, um agriculture with everything that is connected to things that we thought of as very stable and very eternal and these things are fluctuating in a fascinating pace and changing and we can already see the changes happening over the the, uh, uh, the recent year with the bitcoin and the electronic currencies and the changes in food the invention of uh, uh, dairy products that do not come from animals but are real dairy and meat that doesn't come from animals that is real meat and and all kinds of other uh, engine uh, genetic and 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 uh, innovative things happening with our food some some of them so experimental that we don't even know if they're healthy and uh, that's uranus 
this problem that is walking so fast ahead that it doesn't really know, like Saturn does, if the things actually withstand the test of time, if they don't, be, and like freaks, freak accidents and all, all the the abnormalities are also Uranus, right? So we have to watch it as well, and and see that the changes are not going too far, that we've not extended the reach too high, too thin, and Uranus can and will bring great changes to economic structures in the world, to how land is divided and seen, to how food is distributed, to how our body and the electronic uh, interface um, connect, cyborging and uh, adding to your body's electronic mechanisms and chips. This is Uranus and Taurus, you know, and course sensuality and sex are going to be and gender are going to be radically uh, uh, changed and are already changing over the next seven years as I said all our relationship to the material plane and to our senses is changing um, what is so just one thing about that new moon, it's going to be sextiling Saturn and Mars as well. And that gives it both a practical and an energetical aspect that it was lacking before. It, could, it says that we could actually reach to that unity, which is Neptune. Reach out to that innocence, which is Pisces. Reach out to that maternal goddess, to that uh, universal womb, to that source, to that... Uh, divinity whatever you call it within or without whether it's the world and nature and the universe that we worship whether it is something inside us whether it is both whether everything is connected or are you still getting there but Neptune says everything is connected we are all related and when we go back and Neptune takes us back when we go back to the source we understand that we are all the same. We're made of the same building blocks and materials. We have the same needs. We're all drinking the same water and breathing the same air. We all need love. And Neptune is of a place, a knowledge that is divine in a sense because it's much purer and much older and, and much simpler than all the complicated thoughts and words of man that came after it it was there before that and when i see this new moon in Nept in, in pisces conjunct neptune i see something that isn't connected to space and time i see something that isn't connected to the here and now something that says the greatest fruits of this time are going to be by going in by focusing on spirit by connecting to divinity to source by understanding that we did enough, we've sown the seeds, we've planted the tree, and now we need to rest mature. We need to go inside and, 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 and take that emotional process and actually uh, go through an inner pregnancy in a sense. We need to understand the dream again and connect to the dream, connect to the fantasy connect to our imagination and inspiration and great fruits can become uh, 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 um, you know uh, can grow in our bosoms at this time but it is not the time to act yet but when I see those sextiles to one very very energetic planet Mars and to the other very practical planet of uh, Saturn I say you can take those dreams and you can bring them into reality with a mix of action and maturity. Harnessing your past experience, your Saturnian experience on one hand, and your bravery and belief that you can actually pull it through on the other. Do that, and this new moon is wonderful. Anyway, so... Um, over the weekend, so Thursday the 7th, um, 
and Friday the 8th, basically a great time to be with other people, enjoy food and drink. Um, communication is nice even though Mercury is starting its retrograde, so all considering it's nice. As I said, these are good days to progress strategic projects, uh, projects or things connected with your uh, career um, together with other people. On Saturday, do watch it. Don't be too judgmental. Don't be too dramatic. And basically, that's it. If you are interested in studying about Saturn with me in a workshop I'm doing, contact me. Of course, for private lessons or consultations, you can contact me as well. On behalf of Georgia, off camera, and myself, let's have an amazing new moon, a wonderful new week. And thank you for sharing this and commenting about this. And just for being who you are. Light and love. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.